rumbling. Are you ready to rumble? Amen. Man, this is a Baptist church, amen. This guy here is looking for a Baptist church when he came here this afternoon. But I said, I don't know if this is a Baptist church, but one thing I know, this is the church that Jesus, that the Lord Jesus Christ built. Amen. You ready? Amen. Now I praise God tonight that our friend from uh, uh, Washington is back. He's the pastor of Lakewood Baptist Church, Baptist Temple in Washington. And uh, I know him before, and man, he's a good friend. He's a good preacher. And not only that he's a good preacher, he is also a good singer. He's going to sing for us before he preaches for us. Amen. All right, shall we all, uh, uh, shall we all stand? And let's welcome back in our pulpit, Pastor Joshua Kinoff. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me get my words here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try it in Tagalog. All right, uh, is somebody going to play for me? Let's see. Um, we're, we're, we're doing this. You can be seated. We're, we're doing this on the fly to see if it, if it works. Um, can you play a little bit for it so I can hear uh, the key? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start that again. Once I was straying in sin's dark valley, no hope within could I see. But then came the Savior, a blessed Savior, to save a poor lost soul like me. Oh, what a
sing the chorus one more time. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were nailed, scarred. His side was riven. He gave his life's blood. He gave his life's blood. He gave his life's blood for even me. Amen. Turn in your Bibles tonight to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. What a blessing to be back here at CBBC Fort Bonifacio again. I praise the Lord for the opportunity to be here tonight all the way from Lakewood, Washington. And uh, before I read the scripture tonight, I want to introduce uh, a couple of the men that are with me this evening. There are four of us, but uh, my brother-in-law, Richard McQueen's not here uh, he's, he's preaching in San Pedro tonight and uh, preached this morning and did a great, great job. Uh, for those of you that are going to the conference this week, you'll hear him preach this week as well. But also with me this evening is Brother Tom Bradford. Uh, I know some of you thought this was D.L. Moody that came in tonight, uh, but this is, this is Brother Tom Bradford. Uh, he's one of my faithful men on staff there at Lakewood Baptist Temple, and I'm happy to have him here with me this evening. Also, Brother Seth Bailey. Brother Seth and I went to Bible college together at Heartland Baptist Bible College, and he is uh, from Oklahoma City. He's feeling at home here tonight with this old-fashioned Baptist church here this evening. Those, those plaid shirts that you men and ladies were wearing that singing in the choir, hey, Brother Seth is feeling right at home, just like he's back in Oklahoma City again. Brother Seth is uh, the youth director at Southwest Baptist Church. And the Lord's using him in a great way. And I'm so thankful that he is able to come with us on this trip. But are you ready for the preaching tonight? Are you ready for the preaching of God's word? Amen. Amen. Malachi. And uh, if uh, you have a deacon sitting next to you, you may have to help him find that place in the Bible. It's the last, uh, last book there in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. And verse number 1, though. The Bible says, Behold... I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and, and like fuller's soap. And he, he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. And that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and, and against the false swearers and, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless and turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. And notice this, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from mine ordin ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, where 
wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And listen to this. Prove me now herewith. Saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Tonight I want to preach to you a message titled, Prove Me Now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that name that is above every other name. And God, I pray that right now you would help each and every person under the sound of the preaching of the word to open up their hearts and their ears and their minds to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in this place this evening. Oh, Lord God, we pray as as this church has just recently had an old-fashioned Baptist revival, Lord, we pray that you would continue the revival in hearts and lives tonight. Lord, may it be an old-fashioned outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon your people this evening. I pray that we would, if there's any wicked way in us, we would get things right before you. I pray for those that maybe maybe are wanting to quit or maybe wanting to rebel and walk away from you, that you'd help us to get right with you tonight. I pray, Lord, for those that are, are pressing on and serving you faithfully, may they be encouraged tonight to just keep on keeping on. I pray, God, that you would bless this church. And, Lord, bless me as I preach. Fill me with your power and with your spirit. Use me as as I preach tonight. Your word, help me to only speak those things that you want me to. For your people need to hear from you and not from me. We ask that you bless the preaching now. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As As we start the message here tonight. As we start the message here tonight. I want you to be reminded of this, uh, an amazing thought, and, and uh, <clears throat> I think it was John Mark that sang just a moment ago, to God be the glory. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, listen, that with all of our insufficiencies, and with our, all of our disobedience, with all of our wickedness toward God, and trying many times to do life in our own strength, what is, is astonishing, what is unfathomable, what is amazing, is that God is merciful. And that God gives ample, plenteous opportunity for us to come back to Him and prove His ability and His power and his might, and show a lost and dying world that there is a God in heaven. None of us deserve that. None of us deserve to be used in in the smallest of ways by the Lord God creator. None of us deserve that, but God is is a merciful God. And in our passage of scripture here tonight, we don't, we don't know very much about Malachi uh, other than history. History doesn't give us very many facts about this man other than the fact that he, just like many of the prophets of Israel or Judah, he was a man called of God to bring a message of repentance to a stiff-necked and hard-hearted people. And it doesn't take much reading through the the books of the Old Testament or the Word of God to find out that Israel was a blessed people. Over and over again, God would bless them. He would plead with them to follow Him, to follow in His statutes, to, to follow His commandments. He would beg them and He would tell them, hey, if you continue in my ways, if you'll continue in my statutes, if you continue to follow me. And tonight I want to encourage you, uh, CBBC Fort Bonifacio, to continue in the ways of the Lord. Continue in the old-fashioned way. Continue in the commandments of the Lord. And, and just as, as I'm, I'm, I'm telling you here tonight that we need to continue, God would beg 
with his people to continue to follow after him with a right heart. But always, 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 eventually, they would, in spite of God's goodness and in spite of God's blessing, they would rebel against him. Of course, in about 930 B.C., under King Rehoboam, the kingdom was divided with the tribe of Judah branching off of the other 11 tribes. But even in that, God sent his messengers, his men, the men of God, the prophets, both to Israel and to Judah to plead with them, to beg uh, them to, to come back to him. And, and, and honestly, if I had to choose between uh, the, the two, uh, just, uh, just based on the prophets alone, I probably would have picked Judah. I probably would have wanted to hang out with Judah. It would have been wonderful to be able to hear the prophet Isaiah uh, preach and sound forth the word of God. It would have been wonderful to be able to hear uh, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, to sound forth the word of, of God. And they had prophets like Joel and then basically all of the minor prophets, including a Malachi, and when you look at all the men that God sent their way to preach the word of God to them, to preach thus saith the Lord to them, to preach repent and turn back to me, it doesn't take long for us to come to the conclusion that these were a very blessed people over and over again uh, with, with chance after chance after chance God would give them and Malachi of course one of the last of the prophets came on the scene after Judah was taken into captivity but also after Cyrus had issued a, a decree that the Jews exiled in Babylon could return to their land and we know that, that because of scripture we see that about 50,000 accepted the challenge and they went back and about 550 15, they rebuilt the temple and God was merciful to them. And some time later, they rebuilt the wall under the direction of Nehemiah. And for a little while, there was somewhat of a turning back to God. For a little while, there was somewhat of a revival that was taking place. But even after their horrible activity, uh, captivity and after God blesses them to be able to return back home, to be able to rebuild the temple, you would think that the light bulb would come on and they would do what was right. I wish, I wish that we could read the, of, of Judah's history and the nation of Israel and their history and say that after all the chances that God had given them, that they finally woke up, that they finally got serious about the things of God, that they finally decided, hey, we're not going uh, 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 to turn back anymore. We don't want to be slaves to sin no long, any longer. We don't want to be captives in, the, in bondage anymore. We're sick and tired of going our way and doing our thing and trying it in our own flesh in the, in a, in the strength of our, our flesh but you would think that they would wise up and do that and I wish that we could read tonight that that's what they did but it's not they turned their hearts from God once again in fact by this time things had gotten just as bad if not worse but hold on, if you and I were just to, to judge at first glance and see how they, how they lived, how, how they, they uh, worked and how they walked and talked and the, things that, the religious things that they did. Listen, they were doing their ministries. They were offering the sacrifices. They were giving some of their tithes. But they were doing it all half-heartedly. Let me, let me remind you this tonight, that our holy and righteous God hates lukewarmness. Our holy and righteous God is worthy of, of more than half-heartedness. Our holy and righteous God in the book of Revelation says, I detest lukewarmness so much. I detest half-heartedness so much. It makes me so sick that when I taste it, I want to spew it out of my mouth. How, but how did, they, how did they commit the sin of half-heartedness? Well, first of all, you turn back to Malachi chapter 1. And verse number 2, the Bible says, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Are you kidding me? Wherein hast thou loved us? 
So, so basically, they're doubting God's love after he's been merciful to them over and over again. Then we see in verses 7 and 8 that they despise God's name by offering impure, blemished sacrifices upon the altar. Look at verse 7 and verse 8. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Hey, hey, not only were they offering half-hearted, tainted sacrifices to a holy and righteous God, but they were messing with the picture that God would that God had given them that one day the sinless, spotless Lamb of God was going to come and shed his innocent blood, not only for their sins, but the sins of the entire world and my friend you do not mess with the word of God and the pictures that God gives us in the commandments that he's given us and get away with it you don't do it they had despised God's commandment they had despised his name they saw they saw on top of that they saw serving God as a chore rather than something that that was a pleasure to be able to do. Verse number 13 says, Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness it is. What a, what a weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And ye have brought back that which is torn and the lame and the sick. That, that Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? You know, God doesn't want... <laughs> Our leftovers. God doesn't want us serving in, in, in other areas in our life and doing our work and, and, and taking care of our other obligations and our responsibilities and coming and to him and going, well, Lord, this is all that I have left over. Oh, God, serving in this ministry here today, teaching this Sunday school class, singing in the choir, going out soul winning. Oh, God, this is all I have left over. Oh, boy, Lord, serving you sure is tough. Let me remind you here tonight, there is joy in serving Jesus. There is joy in serving Jesus. The problem is that their focus was all out of joint. Their focus was off. Their focus was wrong. And the, instead of seeing serving God as a blessing that they did not deserve, they saw it as a chore. N number four, they wearied God by saying that God, well, Lord, you're just not fair to us. You're kind to the wicked. And, and, and Lord, you're taxing to us. You're cruel to us. And instead of realizing that the hardness that they were going through, through was there because of their own wicked hearts, because of their own stubbornness, because of their own uh, pride. Look at chapter 2 and verse number 17. The Bible says, Ye have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When ye say... Everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delighted in them. Where is the God of judgment? You want to know where the God of judgment is? The God of judgment is having mercy upon you right now. That's what he's telling him. If you want the God of judgment, hey, be careful when you start saying, hey, I want the God of judgment to show up. I want the God, that, hey, that person that wronged me and that wicked person and that evil person and, and, and those, those wicked people out there that are making more money than I do and those sinful people out there that seem to have better health than I do and those, uh, and those heathen out there that, that seem to have, have more than I have. Uh, where is the God of judgment? Let me remind you here tonight that the God of judgment is still also a God of mercy and have not for his mercy each and every one of us would be consumed and, and, and the Bible is telling us here that God's attitude towards them because of their bad attitude towards him was hey you are wearying me with your foolish words you want, a, you want judgment I can show you judgment then, then also they were picking and choosing how much and exactly what they would give to the Lord instead of just giving the 10% of all their increase. That's why in, in chapter 3 and verse number 10, he says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. 
not just the things that you have no use for anymore. You know, it's one thing that really just sometimes it, it, it makes me so frustrated I laugh at it is how, how many many believers uh, they, they have something at their home you know this, I don't know if this happens here but it happens in the United States of America many people uh, they look in their garage and they see all the junk that they've collected that they don't use anymore that's fallen apart and they go you know what I'm done using this I can't use it anymore it's fallen apart it doesn't work anymore you know who I think could use this the church could use this yeah, you could take my old broken down lawnmower. I'm sure somebody can fix that. And you can have my, my clothes that have holes in them. And you can, it, uh, by the way, I heard that, that, uh, the, that the, the, uh, the United States uh, was sending over clothes to the, to the victims of the to all volcano. And the children were looking at, at the clothes, women's wedding dresses and high heel shoes. And designer and 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 na- old uh, navy uniforms. And go, and th- that's just that's uh, that's just like Americans. Hey, we can't use this anymore. You can have it. That's not help. That's not help. But hey, we 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 judge people for for doing that to these people who really do earnestly have needs there around uh, the Batangas area. But we as Christians, how many times do we do that to the Lord? Or we say, God, this is what I have left over. And God, this is my old junk. And Lord, I'm not using it anymore. So, so go ahead and you take it. And whatever, whatever it is that, that we have left over, that's what we give God. But those things that are precious to us, oh no. And that's what they, that's what they were doing. Oh, well, Lord, you can have this, the, you know, in, in my crops this year, I've, I've been so blessed with the corn, but the wheat has not been so good, Lord. So I'll tithe off of my corn, but off of my wheat, I'll keep that back. And God was saying, hey, that shows that your heart is wicked towards me. He says, hey, it's time for you to get your hearts right with me and bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Many many believers are stuck thinking this, that, that, that all God wants is... 10% of their income. No, listen, God deserves all that you are. God deserves everything. And we shouldn't just be holding these to, to, to our finances to say, hey, I'll give you 10% of this. But what else do you have? How about, how about even if, if every Christian in this room here would just give ten, God 10% of their time and 10% of their energy and 10% of their, 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 uh, their talents and their abilities and everything that we have, hey, there, there, would, uh, there, there would not ever be a time where we didn't have enough to reach this world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says, you've despised me, you've polluted my altars, you've wearied me, and you've robbed me. And he calls Malachi, you go tell these people to repent. You preach to them. In chapter 1 and verse, <clears throat> verse number 1, it starts off like this. It says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. And listen, why, why would it say that? Well, uh, th- listen, Malachi himself uh, being called of God and, 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 and God, God laying it upon his heart to go to his people and, and preach to them. Malachi, though, having the precious word of God, in his heart and in his mind and and on his lips Malachi was an imperfect man himself so what a great burden he would have on his shoulders not only that but Malachi had the word of God the word of God listen is a precious treasure and any man who takes it and treats it like it's nothing like we can just change it whenever we want to or we, we can just say what we want to about it listen it's not a man who loves the word of God but when it's a preacher who loves the word of God it's a precious treasure to him and he wants to make sure that he never does anything to disgrace it that he never speaks out of turn or says anything about it or, or, or says anything of what he's, what he's thinking is in it that is not actually in there. He wants to treat it uh, in a pure way because it's the precious, valuable word of God. That's why it's a burden. Then also, uh, because 
the, the love uh, 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 the, the man of God has for the people of God. Do you know this, that your pastor loves you with all of his heart? And so pastoring this church is a burden on his shoulders and on his heart. Why? Because he wants to see you draw closer to the Lord. He wants to see you uh, using your life for the honor and glory of God. He wants to see you understand the joy of a deep walk with the Lord and having your time with, the, with God every day, drawing your strength from him. He wants to see you out so winning, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to see you enjoying serving Jesus. That's why he gets up every Sunday and, and Wednesday night and preaches his heart out and preaches his guts out because he's got a burden on his heart to see you know the things of God. And Malachi, as he, as he approaches these people, he comes to them with a heavy burden on their heart. And I can see Malachi as he preaches God's word, hey, repent. God's been gracious with us. God's been merciful to us. He's given us chance after chance after chance after chance. Won't you turn back to him? Stop despising the things of the Lord. Stop giving him things out of a half heart and serve him and come back to him wholeheartedly once again. And what was their response? Well, wherein hast thou loved us, God? And wherein have we despised thy name? And wherein have we polluted your altars? And wherein have we wearied thee? And wherein shall we return? And wherein have we robbed thee? Listen, it's a sure tell sign. It's a red, it ought to be a red flag in your mind when the man of God is preaching the word of God and he says, this is the problem with some of us today. And he says the word of, not only what he says, but he says the word of God says this is the problem with some of us today. And your attitude is, well, prove it to me. How come that's my problem? How... How, how, how dare you say that this is my sin? How dare you say that this is what I'm involved in? How dare you, preacher, preach and step on my toes? Listen, you ought to thank God for a preacher that gets filled with the Holy Spirit and studies the Word and gets into it because he loves you and he cares about you and he wants you to know God in a personal way and he'll sound forth the Word of God unashamedly even if it hurts your feelings sometimes because he loves you that much. You ought to be thankful for that and not have the attitude that, that, oh, I don't like it when preacher gets loud. I don't like it when preacher gets personal and starts talking about my personal problems. Listen, we all have personal problems. That's why we need the preaching of the Word of God. That's what preaching is all about. The purpose of preaching is to help sick people, and we're all sick people. The purpose of preaching is to help uh, a shattered and broken lives be put back together. And many of us are shattered and broken people before God found us. Uh, the purpose of preaching is helping uh, take those who have problems and get those problems worked out of their lives. That's what preaching is all about. Listen, don't tell me God's not a merciful God. God is... is, is Sending Malachi to work with these people to get them back on track, to get right with the Lord. And they had come to the place, listen up tonight, where they had thought that because of their circumstances, well, you don't, un you don't understand, preacher. Life is hard. And serving God is, is hard work at times. It's tough. And you don't, you don't understand, preacher, the economy is bad. And you don't understand, preacher, the coronavirus is spreading. And you don't understand, preacher, to all volcano is blowing up. And there are difficult things that are, that are happening out there. You, you just don't understand. And, and, mo and the morale is down. And so it's just difficult to serve God with all my heart. It's just yeah. difficult uh, to do what is right anymore. It's just difficult to love my wife the way that I'm supposed to. It's just difficult uh, to raise my children the way that I'm supposed to. It's just difficult to spend time in my Bible every day. It's difficult to pray. Well, listen, let me ask you this friend, when did Jesus ever say it would be easy? He never said it would be easy, but he promised us, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And he promised the apostle Paul along with us, hey, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. What does that mean? It's gonna be hard, but with the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got everything that we need to be able to do the Christian life. We've got what we need. 
But they would use it as an excuse just as many Christians still do today. Well, so, 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 uh, what, because of my circumstances, it, wouldn't God be okay with taking second place in my life? Well, what's so wrong with the way that I live my life? I'm sure God understands. Listen to me tonight. God never understands or accepts playing second best to anyone or anything in our lives. God never understands us putting him second place in our lives. And here's where, where it really gets good tonight. That in spite of the fact that they had rebelled against God, even standing at the edge, listen to me tonight, of a 400-year abyss where God would no longer speak to them, where he would leave them in darkness, no messenger, until John the Baptist would come on the scene. 400 years later, they, he said, this is your last chance. Repent, yet things right. They're standing, they're staring over this 400 year, this year, year, 400 year chasm of darkness where God would not speak to his people. After Malachi, there would be no other prophet until John the Baptist. And in spite of this, in spite of knowing the way that they would choose, knowing that they would turn against him, knowing that they would rebel against him once again, God tells Malachi to write these words in chapter 3 and verse number 7 where he says, Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. And, and going on to verse number 10, he says, Go ahead, come on back and bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and I'm giving you another opportunity to prove me now, saith the Lord of hosts. Now is the time. If there ever was a time to repent, he's saying this is the time. Right here, right now. Get your hearts right with me. Get your hearts fully committed to me once again. Get your hearts right back fully in love with me once again. This is the time, and if you do, if you return to me, I'll return to you. What an amazing message. I will return to you. Return to me, and I will return to you. Christian, there may be somebody here tonight who you're far from God. You've been straying, or maybe you're on the verge, and you're, you're looking around, you're going, well, what does this have to offer me anymore? I've had enough of the preacher's preaching. I feel like I've, I, I, I really get, get a kick out of the times that members come to me and they say, preacher, your, your preaching just doesn't speak to me the way that it used to, and so we're going to go somewhere else. Well, maybe the problem is not the preacher. Maybe the problem is our hearts. And, and, and you're on the verge of walking away, of stopping of serving in ministry, of quitting, reading your Bible and praying. And quitting soul winning you're on the verge of going out and seeing if there's all that that glitters in this world really is all that it's cracked what, what it claims to be cracked up to be may I help you tonight friend don't do it God is saying hey it's not too late return to me now if you return to me I'll give you back the joy I'll, I'll give you back the, the joy in hearing the preaching of the word of God I'll give you back the joy in going out and telling people that Jesus Christ died for them and that he wants to save their souls. I'll place joy back in your heart when you serve me and teach those precious little children in the Sunday school class. I'll give you joy in your heart once again as you sing. Hey, there is power, power, power in the blood as you sing in the choir. God will return to you, my friend. He tells, the, he tells these people, if you'll get right with me, I'll return to you. And not only that, he says, prove me now. And I'll, in spite of your wickedness, I'll pour, I'll pour you out a blessing. And not, and, and not just any blessing. It'll be a blessing that'll be so magnificent, so enormous, that, that, that you'll not, there'll not be enough room in, and notice it says, in my house. Because, hey, listen tonight. When we get our hearts right with God, what we have... It, it, it all gets invested in the work of the Lord. We pour ourselves back into the work of the Lord. He says, I'll pour you out a blessing, and those blessings will be in my storehouse 
so that it will be so full there will not be enough room to receive it. Isn't that what it said? Uh, prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. But he said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. And if you think that the scripture is just about tithing, listen, I, I know some of you think, oh, pastor, preacher tonight, he's preaching about giving. He's preaching about tithing. If you think that that's all this, this, this passage of scripture about is about, you're sadly mistaken, my friend. It's what the tithe represented. It's what the, what, what the tithe was attached to. Their wallet, their cash, it was attached to their hearts. And God is not simply telling me, I want, I want you to get back to putting the tithe in the offering plate. God is saying, I want your hearts back. I want your love back. Return to your first love. Listen, money was where, and their belongings was where their heart was. Uh, Jesus said something like this, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And listen, if your treasure is not in the Lord's work and in the Lord's house, and I'm not saying, hey, you got to go empty your bank account, although us pastors wouldn't argue with you uh, to empty your bank account and give it all to the Lord. That's not what we're saying here tonight. But when, when your heart is right with the Lord, everything that you have, your attitude is this, it does not belong to me, it belongs to the Lord. So if God should ask everything from me, I'll give everything. But he says, he says, hey, just start with the 10%. Just start with the tithe. And it represented, he wanted their hearts. He says, prove me. That, 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 that word prove me, when he says that, he's saying, investigate me. Come to know me once again. Examine, search me. Find, find me out again. Test me. Right when? When should we do it, Lord? When should we seek after you with our whole hearts? When should we come after you once again? When should we submit and surrender to you again? He says, do it right now, don't wait. Don't put it off. If you if you hesitate, listen. So many times you you've experienced this before. The Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart. He says, "I want you to get right. I want you to lay these things at the altar. I want you to get the sin and the iniquity and the wickedness out of your life. I want you to start doing the things that you used to do because you loved me. I want you to return back to me with your whole heart." And you stand there and you grip the seat in front of you. And listen. So many times that happens and we and we we play it off and we ignore it and we push it away and my friend that is very very dangerous just let these people here in the book of Malachi be an example and a testimony to you because of 400 years of God not speaking to them hey God is the, the God of chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance but he's also the God of the last chance and he's the God who would say, hey, young, young man, young lady, gentlemen, ladies, there'll be a time maybe where he says, this is it. This is the last chance that you're going to get to get your heart right with me. This is the last chance that I'm going to give you. He says, don't push it off. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Prove me now. Prove me now. Because if you do, you'll experience that joy again. And I will pour you out a blessing. Because God, you know God, when he pours out blessings, he can, he can pour out better than any other source. Hey, uh, uh, some of you, some of you uh, may have seen pictures or video or maybe have been to the United States where Niagara Falls is, pours I don't know how many, how, many, how many millions of gallons of water over those great falls. Niagara Falls has nothing on God. When God pours out blessings, he says, you won't even have room to receive it all. Well, preacher, does that mean that God will make me a millionaire? Your heart's in the wrong place if that's what you're asking. If God chooses to do that, hey, praise the Lord. I hope he does for me as well. But your, your heart will be, hey, 
I, I don't deserve anything from God. And so however he chooses to send the blessings, Lord, just opens up, open up the windows of heaven. I want to receive it. Uh, whatever it is, how, whatever form you have it in, I want to receive what you have for me. Why would he do this? Listen, please. Why would he do this? Is because he wanted to use them to show his magnificent power to a lost world. He wanted them to, to be used to bring glory to his name. Chapter 2 and verse 2 says, If you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts. He, he, he wanted them to turn back to him because he is a God of magnificent glory. And for those that are yielded to him, his glory can shine through in a magnificent way. Is God's glory being shown through your life? You listen, you may be, <clears throat> you may be backslidden here tonight, serving half-heartedly. Maybe you're even following the Lord, but you're at 95%. Listen, the Lord wants everything. He's not, he not only wants everything, he is deserving of everything. And God, God says, as just as he says to these people here, that we need to get rid of anything and everything that is keeping us from giving God our all. Listen, you say, preacher, I thought you said the tithe was the 10%. Uh, don't make me preach the message again. Because the tithe represent that, represents that which belongs to God. But if we go, uh, like for instance, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse, uh, verse number 19 and 20, where, where it says, let me find it here real quick, where, where it says in verses 19 and 20, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Everything that we are belongs to him. So he's saying, return to me a hundred percent. Prove me now, like David proved God when he faced Goliath. Like Peter proved God when he preached at the day of Pentecost. Like Noah proved God when he built the ark. Like Daniel proved God when he was thrown into the lion's den. Like Moses proved God when he led Egypt out of, or led the children of Israel out of Egypt and, and helped them to cross the Red Sea on dry ground. Listen, tonight I challenge you to I challenge you this evening, let's begin to prove God with our lives. This, this morning, I believe that many of you were busy serving the Lord and you were doing it wholeheartedly. That's why souls are being saved and people are being brought to this church and people being added to the church. But listen, what, wouldn't it be great if every member at Fort Bonifacio was all in? If every member was completely surrendered, completely sold out, hey, pastor would never have to say, hey, we have need of more Sunday school workers and need of more jeepney drivers and we have, we have areas that, that we just don't have enough workers and preacher would never have to say that. He would never have to say, hey, we need more offering for this project or for that project. If everybody was 100% sold out to God, I'm telling you, God would be pouring blessings upon his people and his house house would his storehouse would be full his storehouse would be full but it takes each member individually surrendering their heart 100% to God but the question is are you willing to, to accept God at his word take God at his word accept the challenge and prove him now this world, this lost and dying world is looking to see, hey, are you really, are you really, uh, are Christians all that they say they are? Does, does who they say that they have living inside of them, does he really have the ability to do what they say he does? Far too many lost people look at the lives of, of hypocrite Christians and they say, you've got nothing different than, than what I have. Why would I need to accept Christ as my Savior? Because there's not enough Christians willing to say, I want to prove God with my life. I want God's power and his glory to, to shine through me. And I want this lost and dying world to see that there is a God in heaven and that he will save them 
if they'll humble themselves and turn to him. Some of God's people tonight, hey, I, I want to say this. If you're, if you're a member here and you're serving the Lord faithfully and you're, you're surrendered 100%, praise God for that. Keep on going. Don't quit. But if you're serving God half-heartedly, then tonight we need to bow before the Lord and say, God, I give you all of myself. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender. And let's prove God, his magnificent glory, his magnificent power to a lost and dying world. Preacher, would you come? Great message, amen. amen. Ang pinakamahalaga rito, mga kapatid, kung paano natin pinapahalagahan ang gawain ng Panginoon. Kung napansin niyo po, mga kapatid, sa chapter 3, in verse number 10, nabanggit po doon ang kakulangan, ang mga pangailangan, sa tahanan ng Diyos. Pumunta kayo sa book of Haggai, ang problema ng mga tao po doon, binaliwala nila ang tahanan ng Diyos. Ano ang nangyari sa kanila? Binaliwala po nila doon mga kapatid. Maraming pagod sila, wala ho silang kita. Akala nila malaki na ang nakukuha nila, pero wala hong napupuntahan. Ano ang problema? Sapagkat napabayaan nila ang tahanan ng Diyos. Pag-aralan niyo mabuti, book of Haggai, and now we have the book of the book of Malachi, same problem. Kaya ang invitation ng Panginoon, return unto me. Balikan nyo kung ano ang ginagawa ko sa aking tahanan. Kapatid, kung maayos ang, tah kung maayos ang tahanan ng Diyos, maayos ang ating tahanan. Puno ulit ko po, kung maayos ang tahanan ng Diyos, maayos ang ating tahanan. Pag inuna natin ang tahanan ng Diyos, Mabibuild natin ang tahanan natin. The message is clear tonight. Return unto, the, unto God and the God will return unto us. Shall we all stand please? If that message speaks to your hearts tonight, then let's step out of our seats and come forward. Kneel down. Kapatid, let's bring in, bring our family. Wag ho natin, wag ho tayo manginayin, iuwanan ating upuan. Ang aisles punuin, punuin po natin mga kapatid. Ang, ang ito pong uh, altar dito, punuin natin. And let's come to God tonight. Let's make business with God tonight. Wag ho tayong tayo tamarin ang pagpag-usap sa Diyos. Kausapin natin ang Diyos sa gabing ito. Let's do it. Maliw, ma, 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 maaluan pa ho dito sa altar, mga kapatid. Let's do it.
Father, we thank you for what thou has done to meet us tonight. Thank you for using Pastor Joshua tonight. What a great message. It is, this is your message for your people, oh God. May your people receive this with joy, with an open heart, oh God, and with joy in our hearts. We understand, oh God, that our main problem is our heart. Salamat na na-realize po namin na anumang dinidetouch po namin sa house of God ay hindi po namin pwedeng i-attach Panginoon sa aming tahanan. Mahalaga po Panginoon ang aming tahanan kaya dapat pahalagahan po namin ang inyong tahanan. Hindi po na-realize po namin that our, our, our home is always connected in the house of God. We cannot detach our home from the house of God. Salamat Panginoon na maging ang inyong judgment ay mag start po, Panginoon, sa house of God. Pagpalain niyo po ang lahat ng narinig po namin na patuloy ito maging maliwanag sa puso ng inyong anak ang maging sa kaisipan po namin. Pinupuri ka po namin sa narinig po namin ito Sa pangalan po ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, everybody can shout out Amen for that great message tonight. Amen. 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 All right, back to your seats, please. All right, tahimik po tayo. Alam nyo, makinig po. Minsan ang nakikita po natin sa Book of Malachi, ayun lamang issue about tithings. Pero hindi po natin nakikita yung issue patungkol sa puso po natin. I like what he said. God is just connecting the 10% percent here to check our hearts. You see? Kasi kung maayos ang atin, alam niyo po mga patid, na maaaring maraming mga tao na pwede makapagbigay kahit hindi maayos ang alam puso. Pero ang testing po ay nandiyan eh. Ikinu-connect. Sige, ibalik. Kaya nga, alam mo, ka, pinag-iisipan ko po ng mabuti yan. Uh, bakit ang dami mga sinabi ng Panginoon mula sa verse number 1, pero pagdating po doon sa verse number number 8, nagbago na. Pero kung titignan niyo po ng mabuti, ikinu-connect ng Panginoon yung iniisip nating napakalaga sa ating buhay, sa ating puso. Marami ho, pwede makapagbigay ng ikapo, pero hindi maayos ang puso. Pero lahat ng maayos ang puso, makakapagbigay ng ikapo. See? Kaya po mga putin, isipin po natin kung saan po natin pinababalik ang Panginoon at pagka pinabalik tayo ng Panginoon, sabi ng Panginoon, subukan niyo ako ngayon. Yun ang maganda. Ayusin muna natin ang ating puso bago natin subukan ng Panginoon. Alam niyo minsan mga putin, ang akin pong pinapahayog sa inyo at lagi ko pong sinasabi sa inyo, na hindi nauunawaan ng maraming mga tao. Maraming beses natin hinahanapan ang Diyos, pero wala naman, hindi naman, wala naman tayong karapatang maghanap sa Diyos kasi hindi maayos ang buhay natin eh. Kung sino pa yung, kung sino pa yung mga hindi maayos ang buhay, siya pa yung naghahanap sa Diyos. Same thing dito, dito sa binasa natin ngayon, Malakay. Ha? Sila pa yung mareklamo, kung sino pa yung mga backslider, sila pa yung mga mareklamo. Ha? Hinahanap nila ang Diyos, parang hindi fair ang Diyos. Ang hindi nila nakikita mga kapatid, eh, ang Diyos na dyan, hindi, hindi tayo iniiwan ng Diyos kahit na nagkakaroon tayo ng problema, kahit na may problema tayo sa, sa economically, may problema tayo, hindi pa rin tayo iniiwan ng Diyos. Pero alam nyo, dapat natin isipin kung ano ang ating position before God. Ano ang ating standing before God. Kasi may problema tayo sa Diyos. Kasi, Ano problema na sa, ta, na, natin sa Diyos? Eh hindi tayo tapat sa Diyos. Kaya pinapalo tayo ng Diyos. And yet, hanapin natin, fair ba ang Diyos? Bukang hindi yata fair ang Diyos. Kasi, pero may kasalanan tayo sa Diyos. Anong ginagawa ng Diyos? Gumagawa siya ng paraan para bumalik tayo sa Kanya. At pagka bumalik tayo sa Kanya, sabi ng Panginoon, alright, this time, prove me. Totoo ang lahat. Hindi mo, hindi mo pwede sabihin yung sinasabi ni Paul, ikaw quote ni Paul na, but my God shall supply. Is He really your God? Is He really your Lord? Huh? 
Do you honor Him? How do you honor Him? See? Paano natin i-honor ng Diyos? Paano natin sabihin, but my God shall supply all my needs. Masyado kang possessive kasi may needs. Pero pag wala tayong needs, hindi tayo possessive sa Diyos na yan. Diyan ka lang, Panginoon. Bahala ko sarili ko. Meron ka pa eh. Pero pag may problema na, possessive tayo. My God. My God. Unawaan niyo po mga kapatid. Kaya sana mo unawaan natin mabuti ang pagagamit ng mga passages niya, pagkiklaim na ito'y pangako ng Diyos. Pakita natin kung para saan yung pangako ng Diyos. Ang ipinangako ng Diyos sa matatapat, pagpapala. Ang pinangako ng Panginoon sa mga disobedience, cursing. The Bible is very clear. Bigla tayo tatang tumahimik, mga kapatid. Nasira ko pa yung narinig ninyo. Pero yan po ang totoo. Amen? Amen. What a blessing tonight. Amen? Amen. All right. The assets will come. We will have a regular offering tonight. And I'd like